The product part pattern is the complement of the, uh, or it's, a, it's related to the each asset pattern. This is the set of practices that you use to create the software assets that actually show up in the products themselves. So here you are looking at things like the requirements, the architecture, the components that are actually going to be used to build products. Over and above the non-software assets like the reusable business case or the reusable market analysis. So the practice areas in this pattern include the list shown here from architecture evaluation to testing, but this pattern also pulls in the each asset pattern for some of its work. So we want to create a set of reusable requirements that will become a core asset in building a particular product. So to create that reusable set of requirements, we enact the each asset pattern to bring in the tool support and the process discipline and the work plan and so on for creating those reusable requirements. Similarly, there's an each asset pattern enacted for the architecture, the components, and the test-related artifacts. And then there are the practice areas in the list at the bottom that include things that you don't do for the non-software core assets. These are specific to the things that show up in the product. So what does it mean to do an architecture evaluation of a business case? It doesn't really apply. But these are the things that apply in the product parts pattern for creating an actual reusable, what we call product part. So doing an architecture evaluation, coming up with the decision about where the components that are going to populate the architecture come from. Are they all going to be developed in-house? Are we going to subcontract some of them? Are we going to get some from open source? Are we going to use a mix and match of all of these areas that are make by mind decision? And depending on the paths we take through that decision, we may do some or all of these down here. Mining of existing assets and legacy systems, using externally available software, either COTS products or open source. Coming up with an acquisition strategy if we're going to do any subcontracting of the components. And then there's the integration and testing to create the complete product part. The graphical representation then shows the patterns, the each asset pattern that this pulls in in red and the remaining practice areas in blue. So you instantiate each asset for the requirements, the architecture, the components, and the test-related assets, and then you take a path through the make-by-mind commission analysis decision to populate the architecture. You do an architecture evaluation, you do the testing, and you support testing with test-related artifacts that are created by enacting the each asset pattern for testing. So a whole series of practice areas and patterns acting in concert to create the assets that show up in the products themselves. And again, as I say, this is a, a high-level representation of what actually goes on. Your specific practices, and in particular, how you decide on whether or not to create something internally versus buy it on the open market or go for open source, is your specific practice for the make by mine commission analysis decision. There are some variants of this pattern and uh, here's where I think the uh, pattern creators got a bit carried away with the names. You know, we said at the beginning that every pattern should have a unique name that gives you an intuitive sense of what this pattern is all about. So it's fairly common to talk about a greenfield effort, something that's starting out anew. It's a fresh approach, so it's a, what's called a green field approach. But a barren field and a plowed field? Barren field to me suggests that everything died 
and a plowed field, well, it's brown. You haven't even planted anything yet. The idea of the green field pattern is this is a totally new development effort. We don't have any existing assets to mine. So we are creating everything from the beginning. So it is what is known as a greenfield effort. We're not going to reuse any legacy systems, and we're probably not going to do any contracting either. We're going to develop everything in-house. The barren field pattern is a combination of the green field pattern and the what to build pattern. It's what happens when you are trying to create a totally new product line and you're not reusing existing products and you don't have a clear idea of the scope of the product line. And unfortunately this is a reflection of reality because we do find organizations that start down the path of product lines without any clear idea of what the end goal is. Somebody has decided we're going to become a product line organization so get busy creating reusable components and artifacts and we'll figure out later about the scope and the actual business prospects for it. The plowed field pattern then is the one that organizations enact when they are actually basing a product line on an existing set of products or an existing set of artifacts. So the Cummins case study is an example of a plowed field pattern. We're going to create a product line from the best candidate that we have selected from an existing set of in-house products.